image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Christ want to be first in your life. Look to somebody. Come on. Look at him and say, excuse me. Christ really do want to be first in your life. See, some people want to make him the co-pilot and make him second and third on down the line. Uh, I'll get to you sooner or later, Jesus. But, but the minute all hell break loose, who do you call on? Come on, somebody. If some of y'all go on your mama or your dad or your big brother, they can come and handle the situation. Amen? But I'm going to tell you, when things are outside the rim of what family can do, you need to call on God. Amen. Call on Jesus. Amen? For he says here, whom he also made an image, verse 3 says, and whosoever moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So God predestinated you, that means he called you. And if God called you, then he justified you. And if God justified you, then he glorified you. Amen. Come on, say it with me, verse 31. And when ye, and when ye, and what shall we then say to these things? If God be for me, I think that y'all let that slip y'all thought. If God be for you, if God is on your side, if God is going to fight your battle, if God is going to be there in time of need, if God is going to be there when you're going through something, who can be against you? I don't care what the devil stack up to fight against you with. If God be for you, there ain't nobody can be against you. It doesn't matter how mad the devil gets. It doesn't matter how angry he is with you. He can't do nothing about it. Oh, my, my. I mean, this is beautiful, ain't it? If God be for you. Look at somebody and say, if God be for you. Touch him on the hand. They won't bite you. So excuse me. If God be for you. Who can be against you? I don't know nobody want to fight against God except the devil and his crowd. And I'm sure them demons that messed up a long time ago kind of wish they were back where they used to be. Because they got something waiting on them. Amen. And when I'm saying waiting on them, it's something they ain't going to never get out of. Mm, mm, mm. He says in verse uh, 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up to us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So if God is for you and going to give you everything you need, then what else are you looking for? <laughs> That's a question. 33 said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? If God picked you out, if God singled you out, if God called you from your mother's womb, if God already predestinated you and called you and justified you and glorified you, if God picked you out, if God already got you singled out and justified your life before him, how can anybody stand against you? Nobody can stand before God's elect. It is God who justifies. Man can't do nothing, but it's God. Verse 34 says, who is he that condemned? It is Christ who died. Nobody else died for your sin but Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking religion here. There are all kinds of religion on the earth, but there ain't but one person that died for your sins. And I've said to anybody that I encounter in this gospel, I've said to anybody outside this gospel, by the way of TV or this congregation, if you find anybody else on planet Earth that died for your sin and rose again, I will believe in him. But there is nobody else. It ain't but one, and that was Christ on the cross. So you can talk all kind of religion, but there ain't but one that died on the cross. They can give salvation to every man that will come unto him. See, today people ain't preaching that. They want to compromise and negotiate. 
It's a dangerous thing when you're getting into the compromising and negotiating when it comes to the gospel. One day I'm going to preach a sermon on that too. He says here in verse 34, it is, who is, I'm sorry, in verse 34, he says, who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yet rather that rose again, who is even at the right hand of God, who's making intercession for us. I mean, everything has been hand given to you. Many of you don't even realize you have been spoon fed since your conversion. Come on, somebody. Then verse 35 is the one that hits home. Who shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ? Shall your tribulation, shall influence of tribulation or influence of distress, influence of persecution or in, uh, influence of famine, nakedness, apparel, a sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Paul said, I can answer that question for you. Paul said, I can answer that question right away. I don't have to hesitate about putting the question to you. What shall be able to separate us? Paul said, nothing. That's what he says in verse 37. He said, nay, all these things we are more than conquerors. Whatever comes your way, you can overcome it. Whatever happens your, uh, your way, you can overcome it. Because you're more than conquerors through him that loves you. Y'all getting this? I'm talking about who are you influenced by? You should be influenced by the word of God. Right. Not some, somebody that got some smooth words to talk about. Come on, somebody. Because there's a whole lot of smooth talking preachers. Come on, somebody. Oh, my Lord. They smooth. Come on, somebody. But you better listen to what they say when it comes to the word of God. For verse 38 and 39, con conclusion. For Paul said, I am fully influenced. I am fully, I am persuaded, neither death, and death comes around all the time, you know. He's checking you out and he's checking me out. But Paul said, if death shows up, our life shows up. If angels shows up, our principality shows up. If power shows up, a thing present, a things to come. If a height shows up, a death shows up. He said, neither are any other creature. Known to mankind shall show up and try to persuade me otherwise. There is nothing that's known to mankind that shall be able to separate me from the love of God that be in Christ Jesus. Kick out of that. Nothing shall be able to separate. You say, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, when you're in the hands of God, ain't nobody or nothing can pluck you out. Look at somebody and say, you're in the hands of God. Isn't it wonderful to know you're in a secret place of the Most High. You're under the shadows of the Almighty. You're in the hand of God. And though the enemy wants to destroy you, he can't pluck you out. You know what God said to Isaiah? God said to Isaiah, Isaiah, go back and tell my people. Tell them that I love them. Tell them I'm in love with them. And if they ask you how, tell them I've carved you in the palms of my hands. My, my, my. I, I just can't help but get excited. When you know you're in the right hand. I'm not talking about all state. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about, ain't nothing wrong with all state if you got good insurance. But you better have good insurance by being in the hand of God. 